probably. Um, but I'm filling in for her today. And this is Chat with, with Chap. Chap. Yeah, Ginger is at her tech week, so I, you know, I am sure she is running, 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 very running busy. this week. Very busy. Very busy. So, so fun, we're though. just so, so thankful fun. that Marianne could come and she could join us and be with us here live. It's my to, yeah, my to take Ginger's place. We're thankful for that. If you are in the um, Elizabethtown area. So, we want to explore just a tiny bit the fascinating question of the future of homeschooling. And you know what? It might be helpful just to ask, how long has homeschooling been around? And the shining ray in this area, pun intended, <laughs> is, do <laughs> is Dr. Brian Ray, who has studied homeschooling for over 33 years. He is a homeschooling father and heads up a nonprofit organization called the National Home Education Research Institute, known as NERI. This is a great guy. Yes. In an excellent article on the history of homeschooling, Dr. Ray concludes that homeschooling has been around since the dawn of time. And home education was practiced by mankind at large for many, many years. And it was the dominant form of education in the world, probably, until, and in America as well, until probably the 1950s and 1960s when the public school education really took the lead and, and parents were transferring that responsibility to the school system. Yeah. But until then, the parents were the primary teachers of skills needed for life and also for religious education. Yeah. But Dr. Ray quotes another researcher, Patricia Lines, who notes, by the 1970s, there were only about 13,000 home-educated students in America, about 0.03% of school-aged children at that time, parents, Christians or otherwise, acting as the daily primary teachers and moral instructors of their children had essentially passed away. And about this time, or maybe even a little bit before, Concerned individuals began to raise the question about the agendas in the public schools, and they were often at odds with what parents were trying to teach their children at home, especially particularly if they wanted to do a Christian lifestyle mm -hmm. and nurture them in the Christian faith. So the Christian, homes the Christian homeschooling movement was sort of a spawn then, along with the Christian school movement, but both of them sort of got their, their start there, their jump start, yeah. and it began to gain momentum through the leadership of several important individuals, particularly in the homeschool realm. So two other, you know, very significant questions that we could ask is what are the current number of homeschoolers and is homeschooling growing? Like the past, today's social pressures add to the growth of homeschooling. Politically correct views in public school curriculum often lead parents to homeschool. And I'm not sure if you heard, but just before this school year started, New York passed the law that ended religious exemptions for mandated vaccines. And that thrusted many folks yes, into homeschooling. Dr. examined the federal government studies and statistics on homeschooling from about 2012 to 2016. And some individuals who looked at that thought, hmm, this looks like the homeschooling growth is pretty negligible, nothing's happened much there. But Dr. Ray looked at it from a different perspective and also included some other research and some other uh, thought processes from other individuals. And he con con concluded that it was probably about 2.3 million home educated students during that time period and that homeschooling was continuing to grow at a rate of about 2% to 8% per year over those few years. Yeah. So it looks like homeschooling has and is growing in recent years and past years since the 1970s. Yet a simple but broad contemplative question is, what's our future? Yeah, one homeschooling leader recently stated that the future for homeschooling is bright, but the question, he added, is what will it look like? And we already see things on the horizon that are changing what we were kind of familiar mm -hmm. with when we started out. We see that uh, there are co-ops out there. We can go more than even one day a week so that the major teaching is done by somebody else. Mm -hmm. There's still the traditional model. There's the computer now that has a whole new yes. realm yes. That, from education and how much do you give to that. And, but whatever the shape it will take in the future, it's my, my hope that the core beliefs that drove the initial homeschooling mm -hmm. movement will but hold fast. And that would be that it would be, for Christians anyway, that it would be Christ-centered, that it would be parent-directed, privately funded, and then home-based discipleship. And that's certainly something that CHAP is very much in support of. And I also asked a, a friend of mine who was a retired homeschooling mother, also a retired leader, she had had leadership roles, what she saw, and she said that she prays, she prays for homeschooling movement, that that vision that originally captivated those of us that are older, would continue to go on into the future and help drive, drive the homeschooling movement and play a major role. Now there are 37 state 
organizations like CHAP across North America that support this type of homeschooling. And they have a loose association, and there's a website that you can get on. You can actually look at other organizations and see what they're doing and what kind of things they're involved in. Their website connects to you and connects CHAP included in that. So it's a very great place to, to peek in to see what that, that model of homeschooling is doing yeah. right now. This is sponsored by the Alliance of Christian Home Education Leadership, which also recently formed a homeschool community foundation. I think that tells you something about what these individuals yes. feel the homeschooling future looks like. They think it's bright because mm -hmm. they're hoping to have this foundation to help support homeschooling That's right. in efforts around the nation, maybe yeah. the world. Yeah. Well, you know, there is also a group of retired homeschooling parents who are now involved in an international homeschooling organization called the Global Home Education Exchange. These individuals host a conference in different countries to assist those interested in homeschooling. So it's not only growing here, but it's growing around the world. Isn't That's, that amazing? That is amazing. Yes. That is amazing. And it's very great to see these homeschooling parents who have finished up their jobs and now moving out to yes. help others in, yeah. in the world worldwide. That's right. Deb Bell is one, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, all these organizations seek to share what's helpful with the individuals for where they're at. They're just getting on the, on the train, so to speak, yeah. and um, trying to help them for where they're at. Like the way we started. Yeah. We, I was telling Dee that when we first were married, we had our first child five years later, and um, I was listening to James Dobson at nighttime with, on the little headset, the little radio kind of thing, and he had Raymond Moore in there talking about homeschooling. And I'm like, what is that? I never heard such a thing. So the next morning I got up and little Hannah was sitting, our firstborn was sitting there eating her Cheerios. And, and I said to Bruce, you know what, honey, there was this guy on the radio last night on, on Dobson that said you could teach your kids at home. And he kind of looked at me seriously and he put his spoon down and he said, kind of glared at me across the, <laughs> the table and said, get that out of your mind. Get that out of your head. We're never going to be that weird. <laughs> Well, this is the man that ended up, as the Lord got a hold of both of us, and we ended up homeschooling, and he ended up in national leadership. He actually wow. heads up this the, the, um, home education leader, leadership yes. thing, at, and has been on chat and served there for mm -hmm. uh, a number of years as well. So God has a sense of humor. He does, yes. and you never just know where he's going to take you. You again. never know. Well, you know, our journey started uh, was quite similarly to that. It was not on my horizon at all. I was not very familiar with it. I had uh, two children and they were in private school, but we were in the process of adopting two children. I was pregnant and we knew that the tuition was gonna become too much. And so mm -hmm. my pastor's wife at the time was homeschooling and she said, have you ever considered it? And I had, it was just never even a thought. Um, so that <laughs> summer she took me under her wing and mentored me and took me over to her. She, Deb Bell, had a, a little store over there and I picked out my curriculum right off the shelf and so I started in and it was just going to be a year at a time. I was going to see how it went. But that was how we were too. Yeah, but 19 years later, here I am and you know, looking back, I see how as we were adopting and, and blending our family and bringing everybody together, it really was what was right and it was, it was such, it was perfect. perfect. It was a blessing to us and uh, like I said, it took me a couple years to catch the vision of it. Uh, it was, just, for us. it was just a year at a time, but um, here I am, 19 years it's later. Sort of, you know, as the Lord brings you along, it just sort yes. of happened to suddenly you say, this is the way of life now, and you have a commitment that that's you right. end up seeing it through to the... That's right, that's well, right. Well, we're still doing it, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, yeah, I still, after this year, I'll have two more, two more years, so <laughs> I can't believe it. I, it's sort of like that, you don't see a light at the end of the tunnel, and then all of a sudden the train's coming for you. <laughs> but Marianne and I are now grandmothers. So yes, yeah, so yeah, we get to great. see the next generation. It's our hope that homeschooling remain free in the state because we do know the future is bright and so um that's our prayer and you actually you have a joy to be a part of this yes our um son and his wife nate and stephanie have three children james five isaac three and little Marin, who's nine months old Aww. and they started pretty well in earnest now with james mm -hmm. the other day i was there and, and um, she had to go on an errand and so i was we had the fun of being able to babysit and so she said to me, oh, see, now, Mom, the boys are going to need lunch soon, and Marin's going to need a nap pretty soon. And then she handed me this little sheet of paper, and she said, and if you have time, can you go over this little reading paper with James? And I'm like, standing there with the baby on my hip, and thinking, hmm, I've been here before. before. And I loved it. And inside, I was laughing, and it was a joy. It was a joy to be able to see it happening in our own children's lives, and to even to be able to participate. What a gift from God, it you is. Know, that it we is. can do this. That's right. That's right. The future is bright, and we are thankful at Chapters to be here 
to support you, to come alongside of you, to encourage you, to help equip you if you have questions. Uh, we want to be that for you. And you know, CHAP is also here to help make sure that homeschooling in the state of Pennsylvania remains a freedom of ours. And so we have Brad Bastido who reads all of those bills. It was hundreds of bills that he will read each one just to make sure nothing's coming in that will help in that or that would come against it or inhibit our freedom. So the, yeah, Blessing. yeah. So the future's bright and CHAP is here for you. Um, that is our heart and, and that's, yeah. So I think the future of Christian homeschooling is always going to be secure because it's on the rock. It's on the rock of Christ. That's right. And that the homeschooling in the broader sense of the term is a tool, probably one of the greatest tools in the hand of the Lord, but it's a tool, but it's on Jesus. It's our children are in his hands. And I love that scripture that says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children from Isaiah. And so that means because of that, the future is definitely burning. That's right. It sure is. Now we are going to post the links to the three organizations that we talked about in the comments when we're finished here. Marianne, thank you so much for coming over to my, my house joy. and filling in family. for Ginger. We love it. I hope you come back and you be our special <laughs> guest often. This has been a great well, it's time. It's very fun for me. Yeah, I thank, enjoy it. Thank Making you. Thank you. So we get to be a part of that ongoing yes. Yes. external ministry. That's right. It's wonderful. Well, this has been Chatting, Chatting with Chaps. See you bye -bye. next week. Bye.